after I withdrew the money, went out back to them and went back in the car. The driver told me that, said, he said that Biggs, we feel kill you now. Yeah. Because you don't see we face already. But the only reason we not kill you is because you cooperate with you and give you the money. Yeah. So the next guy up front now come out and pull the door and say, for run. So we yeah. never listen for nothing more. <laughs> After they let Mr. Irvin go, he found a police station in Ocherias and he reported the incident. Like a normal person would after such horrific experience. They took his statement and they gave him this advice. The, the police, they, they took a statement from me and said, all right, when you reach over, you, you, you make a report where you, where you the, the station that is near to you. He did just that the following morning. He reported the incident in Linston, but then they sent him somewhere else. Probably they were following protocols. Who am I to say? So Linston said, all right, you need to go make a formal report at Spanish Town because it was out of their jurisdiction. So you need to go to Spanish Town. So he said, all right. Mr. Irvin complied and went to Spanish Town to report the incident. Seems like complying was the better luck for Mr. Irvin. But his luck of complying was about to run out. Can you recall in the first episode when I said the universe must have been plotting against Mr. Irvin? Because when you look at the chain of event that led him to almost lost his life was in such precise order. But in this case, was it the universe again? Or was it the people who were part of the justice system that were supposed to do their jobs properly in order to protect the innocents? Was to be blamed. Things was about to go sideways for this man. After such tragedy, such ordeal, this man's life was about to get a hundred times worse. Father Karim got Spanish town and to, to, to make the report, they took a 10-page witness statement from me. 